at some point, if you don't start taking the easy things off your list, you're going to hit a ceiling. You're not going to be able to scale your business to the next level. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Fail Fast podcast. Today, we have an entrepreneur. He's the founder and CEO of FreeUp.com. With us today, we have Nathan Hirsch. Nathan, how are you? I am great. How are you? Very good. Very good, man. I'm excited to have you on the podcast. I actually, I've heard you before on several podcasts, like Amazon Sellers Podcast, and I, I'm dying to talk to you. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited to be here. I awesome. love talking about hiring. <laughs> awesome, man. So... Let's start with something that went wrong. Tell me about a, a failure, something that you're comfortable telling us. Yeah, of course. So like any entrepreneur, like any successful entrepreneur, I've had plenty of failures, plenty of ups and downs. So back in the day when I, I was a young college kid and I started this multi-million dollar Amazon business out of my college dorm room, I had to start hiring people. And one of my first hires ended up being my business partner, Connor, and he's been working with me for over eight years. So I think hiring is easy, right? Because I, <laughs> I make a great hire on my first try. Well, I proceed to make bad hire after bad hire after bad hire, and I start to get frustrated. And finally, I find another person that I really like, and the business is booming, there's so much going on, I can't sleep at night, I'm working 10 hours a day, so what do I do? I made the classic entrepreneur mistake of loading them up with everything. And I spent six months teaching them how to do orders, how to do listing, how to do customer service, how to do repricing. And at the same time, I was really good at working with this one vendor. I had a few other vendors, but I didn't really spend much time on them because I was just so good at pushing this product product from the, or these products from that vendor. So I get this guy trained up. I had this vendor on cruise control, making a killing more than any 21 year old should. And it's time for me to take my, make my first vacation or take my first vacation in, in over a year. So I book a trip to Myrtle beach. And on the first day of the vacation, I get a phone call from the vendor telling me that they no longer wanted to work with me anymore. Then I get a phone call from the person that I trained telling me that his parents wanted him to focus on school and he could no longer work for me anymore. So six months down the drain. And then just to top it off, I get a call from my bookkeeper telling me that someone had stolen my identity and filed a $40,000 fake tax return in my name. And I was going to have to deal with that mess when I got home. So <laughs> wow. I, I go from this unbelievable high to boom on a 21 year old, 21 year old entrepreneur. I've made it. I'm making more money than I should. I have everything on cruise control to, I have to start completely over again from scratch. Um, and so that is today is probably my biggest failure. Now I learned a lot from that and I, I'm really happy that that happened uh, in year one and two and, and not in year five, six, seven. Um, but it's, it was a huge lesson on just diversification and not putting your eggs in one basket, um, making sure you diversify your manufacturers, your revenue stream, obviously you're hiring and departmentalize. And I was able to come back and learn from that and build not only a bigger business, but a business that was safer and, and less risky as well. Very good. Like Tony Robbins says that you're sometimes your biggest your biggest failure turns out to be the best thing that ever happened to you. And is that your situation there? Yeah. I mean, I diversify every part of my life now based on that lesson. Yeah. I'm still doing it today. I mean, even when I have 40 assistants right now and they do an incredible job, but I'm constantly thinking, how can I make sure like what happens if this person quits? How can I split it up even more? How can I departmentalize more? How can I make it? So if I do, let's say move someone to a new role or, or I do have to replace someone or they quit, that it doesn't take me very long to replace them. So I, I've learned from that lesson in a hundred different ways, um, but it's stuff that I still implement today. Awesome. Do you still sell on Amazon? So I did through the end of last year and then I made it. So here's the thing about my Amazon business. I, I was very good at it and I sold baby products and I thought that, Hey, I'm going to do, I'm going to sell baby products forever on Amazon. This was my life goal. Well, and we're doubling every year for the first three to four years. 
Well, there were no courses and gurus and all these courses and gurus started to come out. So we stopped doubling and we stopped growing. We're, we're staying steady. We're making money, but staying steady gets boring after a while, especially after you, especially when you're selling products that you're not passionate about anyway. So when I found free up three years ago and I started going on podcasts and networking and meeting influencers and speaking at conferences like I am tomorrow and helping not only the clients, but the freelancers that became a lot more rewarding. So I still did the Amazon business very passively for a few years. And then at the end of last year, it just became time to focus all my attention on free up. Awesome. That's uh, I have an Amazon business for the last three years as well. Uh, all private label, so no retail arbitrage, nothing, all private label. And, and that's different. I mean, you're, I'm assuming that you did private label products that you care about, that you're somewhat invested in, whereas I was just selling other people's products that whatever would make me the highest margin, oh, you yeah. know? Yeah, so I started, it kind of, it does, it's true what you said, because I started my private label before I sold on Amazon. I started, my first one was because I wanted it. And now all the new ones I started just for <laughs> monetary reasons, you know, you find the lowest competitor with the highest demand. And that's what I do. But the first one, no, it was actually just what I wanted to do. So uh, tell me about free up. Uh, how do I know there's something that uh, most, most users will think, how do you know how can I track that the person I hire is actually working for me? <laughs> the, the age old question that, that I get asked every day. So, um, I mean, here's the deal. We get over a thousand applicants every week to get into our marketplace. We vet them really vigorously for not only their skill, but their attitude and their communication as well. It's a long process. And we reject 99 out of every hundred applicants we get, taking the top 1% and letting them in. So once they're in the marketplace and we're bringing clients to them, just like normal people that go on Upwork and Fiverr don't really like having to go through a hundred people. The freelancers don't really like competing against a hundred people for every project either. They like it that we bring clients to them. So once they're in the marketplace, they care a lot more about making sure you're happy and staying in the marketplace and getting more clients from us than they do about stealing an extra hour here or two hours there. So, could it happen? Yes. Is there always risk? Yes. There's always risk in business, but to be honest, it rarely happens. And if that is a big concern of yours, you can use a time doctor. Um, you can use whatever software you need to feel comfortable. My whole mentality, and I have 40 VAs is I don't have time to go through everyone's screens and go through the screen capture. And I mean, how long is it really going to take before I realize that someone is screwing me over a week, two weeks? Um, from there, I'll fire them and it might cost me a few hundred bucks. But if, I, if I'm spending all my time going through these people's screens to try to shave off some hours here and there, that, that's going to cost me way more money in the long run. So at least that's my mentality. Yeah, exactly. So how do I pick uh, a go to free up and how do I pick, let's say, for instance, for the Amazon business, you, I want somebody to create listings or do the, you know, the copyright for the five bullet points. Uh, there's already people that you have filtered that do that particular job? Yeah, so there's no browsing with us. Whenever you want a freelancer, you click request a worker or request a freelancer right inside your account. You tell us what you're looking for, takes a minute, and then we fill that request. Within a business day, you can meet with the person, make sure you like them. If you like them, you click hire. If you don't, you click pass, and you provide us feedback. And then we get you someone else based on that feedback. So it's a pretty fast process. Um, with that said, we have three different levels of freelancers. You got basic, mid, and expert level, where a basic level freelancer has years of experience because we're not a marketplace for newbies, but they're there to follow your systems, your processes. They're, they're followers. The mid-level people, 10 to 30 bucks an hour, bookkeeper, graphic designer, listing writer, they're specialists. They do the same thing eight to 10 hours a day. You're not teaching them. They're not consulting with you. They're doers. And then you got the experts of 25 and up that can consult, audit, project manage, execute high level game plans um, that you can use to bring their expertise to the table. So what you have to figure out is, are you kind of stuck in the day-to-day -day operations and you need the follower? Do you just have that list of projects to take off your plate? So you need the doer or do you need direction? Do you need someone to come in to do something that you don't know how to do and with that expert and then you put a request in and we fill it. That's very interesting. Very interesting. 
Now, my personal, and this uh, normally, you know, I ask questions that I think the audience needs to know or they want, but this one is actually something that I have trouble with. I had 10% uh, of the amount of VAs you, you do. So I had four before, and my biggest issue was knowing what to assign to them. Uh, how do you deal with that? How do you know what to assign? You know, the things that I figure, so far I'm the best person at doing job A, B, or C. How do I get somebody else to do my job? Yeah, so this is what I do. I come up with two lists, and, and I'm constantly updating the list. The first list is, is a thing is all the things that I do on a day to day, week to week, month to month basis. And th then I prioritize that list from easiest to hardest. And I start taking those things off my plate. And there's some trial and error, there's some experimenting. But at some point, if you don't start taking the easy things off your list, you're going to hit a ceiling, you're not going to be able to scale your business to the next level. There's very few $5 million a year businesses that are one man operations, they, they just really don't exist. Um, the other the second list, which actually stem, stems from an activity that my business partner and I did years ago, where we sat outside on a balcony and for an hour back and forth, it might've been two hours. We, we just said, Hey, you're bad at this. <laughs> and we would write it down being brutally honest with each other, just hitting each other in the gut. But at the end of it, we had, we realized we complement each other very well, which is great. But we also had this list of things that we were both bad at but we were doing them every single week. So what we did was we started turning those weaknesses into strengths by hiring those mid-level, expert-level freelancers to come in and do those things at a high level. And that's what accelerated our business to the next level. So that's what I encourage you to do is to create those two lists, create a starting point, and really create some kind of rule. My, my rule is three months. I don't do anything for longer than three months without taking it off my plate. Whatever you're comfortable with, to really force yourself to outsource, to hire, to use remote talent, to, to get your business to where it needs to be. Okay. And according to your experience, if I would go and pick the experience level, the, the highest level that you have, uh, would I still need to provide that uh, freelancer with like my standard operating procedures? Or would, do you think at that level, they even have probably better knowledge than me? You, you don't provide them with your standard operating procedures. That's for the basic level. Um, but you should, you should treat it as a collaboration. Before they get started, you should meet with them. You should say, hey, this is what I've been doing so far. These are my strategies. These are the reasons why things are in place. And they might bring something to the table and, and be like, you know what? From my experience, this is actually better. They might say, oh, this is a good idea. This is working for you. Let's not change it. And I mean, it's, at the end of the day, it's still your business. I mean, if you hire any consultant, they're, they're going to give you options. They're going to give you their input. But at the end of the day, it's your decision whether you want to move forward with something. So before they actually get started on any kind of execution, make sure there's a meeting of the mind. Make sure you're on the same page, that you like their game plan. And if for whatever reason you don't, we, we can always get you someone else and, and make sure that you, you do um, get on the same page before they get started. So treat that more of a collaboration than a, hey, follow my instructions. Nice. So these meetings, when I go to meet this person, is this all done through uh, free up? We, we like we like right now we share the screen with the freelancer. Is that done in there? So when I created free up, I took everything that I liked about the other marketplaces and I changed everything that I didn't like. And one of the things I didn't like was that I was forced to communicate with people through their platform. So with free up, all the billing and the and our customer service and the payments is all through the platform and, and requesting a worker. But when you work with a freelancer, you can communicate with them in whatever way works for you. If you like Skype, Zoom, WhatsApp, Viber, phone call, email, whatever, whatever you like, um, you can do. Now, I'm a Skype person. I prefer Skype. I encourage people to use Skype. It's just fast. It's easy. Everyone has it. But if you like something else, feel free to use it. Okay. Yeah, there, that's actually something that um, using one of the competitors just because I'm used to it for um, many years Every time I've tried to give the freelancer my email, I would get flagged, you know, uh, you're not allowed. And that would piss me off so much that the fact that I was not allowed to even give them my, their, my email for any reason. Yeah, so, I mean, I hear you. There, there were a lot of pain points and that's why I got frustrated and built my own platform. Very nice, that's, that's the way to do it, right? You find something you want and build it.
Now, uh, about payments, you mentioned, how does this work? The freelancer works for free and the person that hires the freelancer uh, pays you a fee. How does this work? So, so the freelance doesn't work for free. Um, they, so you can do hourly or fixed price. That's between you or the freelancer. Um, our billing periods are Wednesday to Tuesday. We charge you every Thursday for any hours worked during that billing period. Um, and then you have a week to dispute anything before we pay the freelancer the next Thursday. So it's just that, that circular um, billing. If you, if you don't use them for a week, there, there's no charge, there's no monthly fee, there's no sign-up fee, um, there's no minimums, there's no obligation, anything like that. If Bob is, is 20 bucks an hour and you use him for two hours, you pay 40 bucks. And we take our 15% um, before we pay them the next Thursday. Very good. So now talking about the technical stuff, uh, are you a coder? Did you, you thought about this and you coded it yourself or is your partner the coder? How did it go? I wish I was a coder. I feel like I'd be a billionaire right now. I, 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 coding is not something that, that I do well, um, but I've learned over the years to, to work with developers. And Connor's not a developer either, which is interesting having what's turned into a software company and not having a tech founder. Um, it's really Connor and I plus freelancers. We only hire freelancers on the marketplace that are available to our clients, the same exact people. So we have, we have no employees, no office, entirely remote. So Connor handles more of the, the marketing side. I handle more of the process system, customer service, um, sales side. And, and he builds a website too. He does WordPress, but he doesn't do Node, which is what our, our software is built in. Um, so we have a dev team. It's three people, one in the US, two in India. Um, and, and they run our software. They built it from the ground up where we have a hundred pages of stuff we want to add to it. And we're constantly prioritizing and chipping away and adding stuff to it. And, and one of the coolest things and, one of the things I love about business is just getting feedback from people. I mean, I, I talk to clients, I talk to freelancers, we encourage feedback. How can we be better? How can we make this a better platform for you? And I mean, almost all of our software upgrades are feedback that came from other people. Very good. Very good. Uh, yeah. It's funny. You said you wish you were a coder. That's my exact feelings too. I always wanted to be one, but I even enrolled in university for uh, programming and I, no, I couldn't do it. <laughs> so, very good. Now, um, Nathan, we, we started this a little bit late to, thanks to uh, some confusions with my calendar. And, <laughs> it's all good. And I know you, your time is limited. So, uh, let's talk about a, a book that has influenced you. What, what's the number one book in your list? Yeah, so this is kind of my my uh, my default, <laughs> but start with why only because kind of for the same reasons I explained before. I mean, with the Amazon business, it was always fun being an entrepreneur, but that that why was really always missing. And I feel like at sometimes, like even when we were at the, the the peaks, I never feel like I was making a difference or giving back or anything. Um, but my mentality has always been: you have to take care of yourself first, or else you can't take care of other people. I mean. How many people out there do you see that are trying to make a difference in the world, but they can't because they haven't taken care of themselves first. They, they're, they're stuck in that nine to five job, so they don't even have the time to go and do that. So Amazon was kind of my way to take care of myself, and, and it allowed me a lot of freedom financially, time, and all that. Um, but with free up, I actually have a why. I'm helping people. We, we paid out over $3 million for freelancers last year. And when I'm, when I'm traveling and I meet with U.S. freelancers or I was just in the Philippines, people are showing me their houses, their cars, stuff that they bought with this money. That's a really cool feeling. And same thing on the client side. When I meet with clients, we've seen these businesses scale and grow because people have had access to talent faster. So for me, that, that's a book that just means a lot because it kind of put in perspective that you do have to have a why in your business if you want to do it for the long run and if you want to have success doing it. Amazing. So you actually go and you meet some of these freelancers when you're traveling around. That's, that's so cool. It gives me an excuse to travel. Yeah. It was funny. I, I went to uh, Mexico for a bachelor party and I ended up spending a night partying um, in downtown Mexico with a bunch of freelancers that we had there. Oh man, that's, that's so awesome. Right on. So Nathan, if the, uh, the people that are listening to us, if they want to find you, if they want to use your services or the services of FreeUp, how do they find you? Yeah, so if you go to freeup.com with three E's, 
First of all, my calendar is right at the top, free meeting with me anytime, um, and, and I plan on keeping it there. Um, I'd love to talk with you about your business, how I can help, um, regardless of whether or not you use my service. Obviously, if you want to talk hiring, I'd love to help. Um, you can create a free account, uh, click become a client, or I think they, we changed what the button was called. It's called like Hire Now. Um, create a client account and mention this podcast to get a free $25 credit added to your account to try us out. Um, and me and my team are, are really there to help and support you. Awesome. Guys, you heard Nathan. You get a 25% discount. By $25 referring. credit. $25 credit. Awesome. Okay, Nathan, if there's one thing that you want people to remember, what would it be? So hiring, no one has a 100% hiring record, right? It just doesn't exist. And the worst thing that you can do with your business is make a bad hire or have a bad experience and just give up on hiring. It's going to hurt you in the long run. You have to have the mentality that to focus on what you can control. And what you can control is the process, how you interview people, what service providers you use, how you set expectations, how you start that feedback loop. And you can see a lot of this on our blog and our YouTube channel, but focus on your process. When you make a good hire, continue to improve your process. If you make a bad hire, go back. What could I do better? How can I improve it? Don't just give up. It will really hurt your business. So if I can leave you with one thing, regardless of whether you use free up or not, don't give up on hiring. It really is the path forward to build a bigger and better business. Awesome. Nathan, thank you so much for your time and all the best. I'll be, I'll be seeing you on uh on free up with three E's. <laughs> Looking forward to working with you. Bye everyone. All right. See ya.